Hey everybody, I just wanted to talk for a few minutes about Gagné's nine events of instruction and how they apply to e-learning. This comes from a book called The Conditions of Learning and Theory of Instruction from 1965. Robert Gagné goes through a lot of different uh, kinds of uh, approaches to learning and how uh, students learn and how they respond to stimulus, even just from the title that you see, the conditions of learning. What kind of learning theory do you think uh, Gagné used to support his writing? If you said behaviorists, you were right. It was a focus on a stimulus response or outcomes of instruction. Described in this book are what Gagné called the nine events of instruction. These are teacher actions that are intended to elicit uh, a desired outcome of some sort. They're used quite a bit in course design and teaching alongside of Bloom's taxonomy. Those are two things that, that show up over and over again. As I list them here, the definitions are going to be pretty self-evident, at least from the onset, and I won't spend too long just kind of giving the overview of the list, but then I'm going to go into a few ways in which, as an instructor, that you could do this inside of an online course, and using examples basically from this course that you've just taken about different things that uh, could be done within the course uh, from a teacher presence to bring these events of instruction into the course. So even as I list them here, uh, maybe you could be thinking of ways that either yourself or I have used them in this online course. The nine events are gaining attention or gain attention, inform the learners of objectives, stimulate recall of prior learning, present the content, this is like the stimulus, provide learning guidance, elicit performance, provide feedback, assess performance, and enhance retention and transfer. Now much of this will be built into the course already that you're going to teach, but how do we bring then a strong teacher presence uh, into the online course? When you do this, what you basically have to work with are text and video through emails, announcements, office hours, online office hours through Zoom, uh, discussion responses, and feedback and grading. So I'm going to use a few examples from this course to go through each one of these nine events of instruction fairly quickly, hopefully, and to point out some different ways that you know, we can do this. So first, gaining attention. Well, one way when I started the class, I tried to pull you in with an email to you before the class even started. Now, I, I did highlight the $500 stipend, and maybe that got your attention. But uh, since you can't offer your own students money to take the class, what can you do to engage them early in the course, even before the course starts with something like, an email. And then also to gain your attention, when I welcomed you to the class, I used an announcement. Within this announcement, I provided a video. Um, and uh, when I published the first module or the zero module to try to get you pulled in, um, the zero module also included a kind of a get to know you chat as well that hopefully got your attention and pulled you into the course even before the course really began. Uh, these announcements go out to every student by default. They show up in their inbox, but they're housed in the Canvas course itself, so it's something that they can uh, look back to later and, and has a little bit of an advantage over just sending an email. Uh, if they are getting the message in Outlook, however, just keep in mind that if you're sending a video, it's not embedded in Outlook. They will have to go into Canvas in order to watch the video. So the next event, inform learners of the objectives. I did this uh, at the beginning of each week and your course courses, your online courses will have this built in at the beginning of each week in terms of outlining the objectives. But what can you do as a teacher then, say the course is already set up, to help um, kind of lay that foundation for the student learning this next week? Um, you could give a little more context perhaps through an email or through an announcement. Uh, I added a video here. You could put that into the into the announcement. 
Um, some teachers will uh, create all their announcements ahead of time and, and have them set to be released every, say, Sunday night with um, and just talking about those objectives of the week, the things to kind of think about what their students are going to experience, what they're going to need to do in order to meet those objectives. Number three, stimulate, recall of prior learning. I tried to do this before each content, talk about what we learned the prior week, how it fits in to the current week content and how it often fits into the uh, final assignment, which for us was the manifesto. Um, this should also be built into the course design, but you want to consider yourself as a guide for the course and uh, kind of like a glue that tries to connect everything together for the students as they walk through it. Um, when you're looking at the course yourself, take a student perspective. Think about what connections need to be made for them. What would be helpful? What gaps are there? How can you connect then the content uh, to their own experience? What ways can you take information from the previous week and, and draw it into the current week? Four, present the content. This is the main content, the stimulus. The bulk of this, again, will be built into the course, so we won't spend much time on this. We'll just um, think about uh, kind of ways in which that you can also connect the students into this content. You need to be immersed in the content yourself in order to do this, of course. And then provide learning guidance. This is another point in which uh, the teacher presence can come in into the online course. What instructional support do you need to give to the content? Uh, is there any spotlighting to be done? Something like, look here, don't miss this paragraph. Uh, make sure you read this part. How will you do this? Uh, through an email message, through an announcement, a just-in-time message. This is also a great time to make the content current with maybe a message like, hey students, I saw this in the news this week, or have you seen this video? Even funny videos sometimes can connect into the content and keep the students uh, focused on the things that they should be focused on. Number six, elicit performance. And this is really the practice part. You're trying to elicit out of the students some sort of competence. Um, time to help the students internalize these skills. I tried to use the discussion posts as a place to practice trying out the material before taking it live in a sense. Part of your job is to try to help the students go deep and confirm correct understanding. Um, in discussions, you do it for all to see. You can ask students to elaborate or explain more. One thing is to be careful correcting in discussion posts, unless you've already built some significant trust with the students. Uh, shame is not a good motivator for eliciting performance out of your students. And seven, providing uh, feedback. You can do this in the discussions, but you can also do it, of course, in the assignments and the quizzes. Anything that is created by this student, you can provide feedback. Now, I found these, uh, these great ex examples of types of feedback that it could include uh, from the Northern Illinois University Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. And types of feedback could include uh, confirmatory feedback. This informs the students that they did what uh, they were supposed to do. Corrective feedback. It informs the students that the accuracy of their performance or response. This is more of kind of like a, a right or wrong kind of feedback. Remedial feedback. It would direct the student towards the right direction to find the correct answer or maybe to learn a skill in order to come and loop back around to the right answer. It does not necessarily provide the the right answer in this remedial feedback. Informative feedback, which would provide new information, maybe some different information, maybe some additions or suggestions to a student, and it confirms that you've actually been listening as a teacher or reading what it is that they have to say. Analytical feedback, finally, is more specific, and it might provide the students some suggestions. It might get down into the details a little bit more, recommendations, some information, specific information to help them correct their, their performance. And then the eighth event, assess performance. This is a little different than feedback. Uh, this is about what it is that they learned. Uh, are the learning outcomes being met by the students? Are they getting it? This might be something automatic, like a quiz, which I built into the, the course that you saw, or like an assignment or a discussion post. 
see how they're doing. Feedback comes into play, of course, but it might be more a matter of follow-up, maybe even individually with the student, or maybe with the whole class. If you do a quiz and nobody is getting it, then that's a sure sign that something is wrong, that you really haven't built into the into the course the kind of content that is needed for the for the students to achieve the objectives that you're trying to achieve. And you need this assessment part because how else do you know if the students have met the objectives or not? And the final event, enhance retention and transfer. You know, at the end of the day, it is all about transfer. I mean, there's no sense in teaching a class even great content if it's just a matter of head knowledge. It's about transferring back into real life and making uh, the taking the things that the student is learning and applying them. I tried to do this in this class by uh, creating an assignment that was very real-world oriented and often throughout uh, the assignments uh, trying to drive it home with some instruction about using language about how this will play out in your teaching or how will you apply this in your manifesto. And you can do this as well in your social work classes. And of course, as social workers, we're, you know, you're pr practitioners. And so this is where it's super important to think about how this knowledge transfer is going to happen into real life. And these are the things that are going to make sense, as we know from our adult learning theories, to students. They're going to make they're going to make the connection and it's going to be important to them when they know that this is connecting into real life. And so um, you can do this through your emails, through your announcements, uh, in different ways, through your feedback, to continually help the students think about how this is going to apply back into their real life. That's it. <clears throat> Here's some resources. Thanks for watching. Uh, see the slides below. Hope this was helpful as you embark on your journey in online teaching and as you guide other learners along the journey.